please whoop and holler for the fantastic Nick Dixon. <laughs> Thank you. How's everyone doing? You all right? Yeah. Thank you so much for coming out. It's obviously a very sad time, so we thank you for coming out to our secret alt-right meeting. Um, it's what she would have wanted. Um, I'm joking, it's not alt-right, apart from my set. Um, I, so, I'm Nick Dixon, if you haven't seen me before, hello. That is my, cheers, yeah. No, it's more of a rhetorical performance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 actually speak. So uh, uh, I'm Nick Dix. That is my name. If you haven't seen me before, or if you have seen me, same name. Don't change it every gig. Bad for branding. People hear my name Nick Dixon in cool areas of London like this. They say things like, "Oh, your nickname at school must have been Dick Nixon, like the American president." That is what I can tell those people about a proper education. All right, because I went to a comprehensive in the north. My nickname was Pufter. Um, <laughs> Yeah. Not gay even, that's just how it was. In North, everything was gay at my school. I did English, that was gay at my school. I did music, that was gay, apparently. I did Stephen, that was... Uh... <laughs> that was amazing. Um... All right, first joke, nailed it. Um, getting back in the zone, some salt on the stage, why is that? Good banter. I'm a... Uh... <laughs> I've actually, so the guys, this is my first gig back after five months off. I actually uh, retired from stand up comedy. Uh, and um, perhaps you can tell, I, uh, I, ret <laughs> I, ret <laughs> I did stand up for 11 years, was one of the best in the country. Who cares? Don't talk about it. But um, then, I, uh, then I retired in April, no one noticed. And um, so I've come back <laughs> um, <laughs> by not very popular demand, really. But uh, and Andrew Doyle asked me to do it, and he's my employer, so here I am. Um, I've actually. Why did I quit comedy? Great question, thanks for asking. Um, no one spoke was the joke there. Um, it's meta. So basically, uh, I sort of got sick of the comedy industry. Basically, it's full of pretty much uh, backstabbing, cowardly, moronic, woke scum. Um, plus, I didn't like the travel. So it was those two, it was those two things. I just got, I sort of got sick. My views don't exactly align with the comedy world, so I got sick of being hated. So I became a GB News presenter. <laughs> And now I'm hated by a much broader demographic of people from all across the country and the world. We're online. So it's, it, I actually get hate mail now, believe it or not. Only, only about half of it is from my ex-girlfriend. Uh, the other half is from Andrew Doyle. But it, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough job. It's, it's tough. But it, it's, I'm, you know, I feel I'm not in... The, put it like this. I'm a GB News presenting straight white male Christian. That's, I'm about the most hated, oppressed person in the country. It's, it's even weird to admit you're a Christian now. Not here, obviously, but like at the alt-right gig, but like in, in normal rooms. If I say I'm a Christian, people get weird. Even my parents are not Christian. I told my dad I was Christian. He was so freaked out. I had to tell him I was gay just to take the edge off. <laughs> I was like, Dad, I've met a man. He was like, Jesus Christ. I was like, yeah, that's him. How'd you know? Yeah. Nailed it. Um, can't say nailed it as a Christian because of the whole... That was a there was a whole incident. We don't talk about it. Um, we do actually a lot, but um, <laughs> straight white GB news presenting Christian. What a nightmare! I mean, I'm the most oppressed person in the country. Good thing, is, lucky I've got my looks. Other than that, I'm in real. F <laughs> fuck off. I'm in. <laughs> Otherwise, I'd be in trouble. And I'm not even that tall, guys. I mean, I'm, I'm five nine and a half, so I'm, I'm smashing it. But like, that's high oppression is something people don't talk about. That's the victim group people don't talk about. But it's a real thing, guys. You try and go out with women, you find they're obsessed with height. Men aren't bothered about height. We're just good people. We don't care about that. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Just good people, we care about your personality. My ex-girlfriend, she was five foot, I didn't even notice, because she, she, she had amazing personality. And, um, amazing, but um, women are obsessed with height. I had a date lined up with a very beautiful woman. She's a bit too good looking for me, but she wasn't that nice, so it sort of balanced out. And uh, just keeping it 100, guys, you know me. But it, it, we had a date lined up, but like an exclusive club in like uh, Covent Garden and all this, it all lined up perfectly fine. But then she messaged me just before the date. She goes, wait, how tall are you? I'm like, why are we going on a fairground ride? Like, why? <laughs> and I literally texted that back to her because I'm a bit of a ledge. Um, yeah, it ruined the date, but good bants in it, lads. So I text her. She goes, well, it's just that I, 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 I normally go out with guys over six foot because I'm five six, but I normally wear heels. I'm like, you can't do that, can you? Like, yeah, I'm five nine, but I'm often on horseback. <laughs> yeah. 
soz. So, yeah, you've got to be at least eight foot two and uh, pretty fast at running. How quick are you over five furlongs? Because that's what I'm... That's what I'm looking for at this stage in my life. Must eat only sugar cubes, that's what I need. Hi. The other one is ghosting, that's a big thing now. If you don't know, if you're not sure what ghosting is, that's where you're messaging someone, then they just don't get back to you for no reason. And you're like, fine, I'm just gonna walk away. It's been six years, got my pride. Um, <laughs> six years is a cut off, lads, don't be an insult. But yeah, um, I don't even know why it's called ghosting, that's not how ghosts behave, is it? In my experience, ghosts outstay their welcome, if anything. <laughs> They keep bothering you even after they're dead. You know what I mean? Needy AF. It should be like, should be like, oh, a ghost is somebody the other day. You're like, oh, what? You didn't get back to them. No, no, no. I showed up in their house late at night and started messing around. <laughs> started messing around in the kitchen, banged a few pots together, opened a couple of windows, and I fucked off. You're like, I think that's called breaking and entering, mate. That's big. Can you imagine how boring Ghost was, Ghostbusters would have been? Like, just a two hour movie about spoiled millennials ignoring each other. <laughs> Who are you going to call? No one, I'm just going to leave it, actually. <laughs> there you go, still got it. Um, <laughs> fucking hell. Why did I quit? I'm so good. Um, I, uh, sorry, that, I lost the crowd. Um, I, uh, yeah, I'm not that asked about dating anymore, guys, because I'm, I'm well into my 30s now. Some would, would argue 40, and I'm... I'm <laughs> <laughs> that joke's quite old, so <laughs> I'm... Um, I'm, I'm not that bothered about dates and stuff. I'm much more bothered about property now. This is a big change in my life. Used to be on Tinder, now I'm all over Zoopla. Do you know what I mean? It's quite similar as well. You're swiping away, you find one you like, you get there, it's nothing like the picture. You know what I mean? It's a bit smaller than you thought and too many people have been there already. <clears throat> that day and, and it's... Uh, you can't afford it anyway. And um, a bit of damp and... Um, Garden's overgrown. You get the idea. <laughs> Touch of mold. I should have stopped. I should have stopped on the last one. I'm sorry. You need a good house now as well because the government can lock you in your house. Did you know that? That's a new thing. The government can lock you in your house. We all had, remember the lockdowns. I'm sure most people here hated them. I was against lockdowns from the start. Thank you very much. One of the most disgusting policies in history and also a very tough time for me. I'm not going to lie. It's not easy homeschooling uh, three young children which is one reason I don't have kids, but, you know. <laughs> I've read articles, it looks hard, is what I'm saying, but, you know. I was totally against lockdowns politically, but if I'm honest, they, they're in, lockdowns are embarrassingly similar to my normal life. Do you know what I mean? I, I've been self-isolating for years. It, it, was, it wasn't called that back then, it was just called being mental. But like, I, I'm like, I've been washing my hands obsessively, trying not to leave the house or socialize. Everyone said I was a loser, turns out I'm a pioneer. All right? You're basically looking at the Christopher Columbus of wanking alone in a studio flat. <laughs> I'm joking, I've got a one bedroom now. I'm doing well. Um, I don't get it. People love lockdowns. They, they, like all the polls they did, people actually like the lockdowns. The government locks you in your house and you actually like it. What is wrong with you? Why, how come Sweden is the only country that doesn't have Stockholm Syndrome? That's what I want to know. Am I right? <laughs> Thank you very much. A sort, of, a sort of reluctant clap, but it was clever enough that you had to do it. Um, all right, I've got to go in a minute. This has been a lot of fun, guys. I, I try and do, since lockdowns, I try and do a lot more things in my life. I'm like, I get out and do things. I, you know, present on a far right channel. I, I, uh, I, do, I, I, you know, I try and go to the cinema now because you, you've got to appreciate things. I was, trying to, I was trying to look for my local cinema listings recently, and actually, I, I, someone had reviewed not the movies, but the building and the management of the building. And I've actually printed it out and brought it with me. I thought we could end on this classic. This is a real review that I've printed out because I'm so alone. Um, there's a real review of the Odin where I live, right? Someone had written, as you'd expect, the concessions are priced astronomically highly, but they don't search on the way in, so it's easy to smuggle in a tray of sandwiches and a flask of tea. <laughs> Who is doing that at the cinema? I know we're in the cost of living crisis. We've got inflation, but can you imagine this kind of date? Like, oh, should we get some food after this? Like, don't worry, babe, got it covered. Got sandwiches, yeah? She's like, all right, what's, what's that in your trousers? Oh, that's just a flask, don't worry about that. Um, <laughs> Just a dick joke, not that intelligent, that one. Um, don't overthink it. This guy had written 30 reviews on Google. 30, three zero, and I read them all. Because uh, he's a loser, not me. <laughs> he reviewed London Zoo. How arrogant is that, reviewing animals? Like, yeah, giraffes, three stars, nice trying nature. Next for a bit long. Um, <laughs> my favorite one, he reviewed a bar called The Flying Scotsman, right? And he's written, terrible beer, but one doesn't visit for the real ale. This place is all about the strippers. <laughs> 
bit sinister, isn't it? With the zoo a minute ago, having a nice time. He carries on. He goes, it's very much girl next door and a bit like watching your girlfriend strip, but the girls have had some training, so it's not totally amateur. <laughs> All right, good to know, mate. Um, plus, they don't search on the way in, so it's easy to smuggle in a tray of sandwiches and a flask of, <laughs> flask of tea was the punchline. Guys, I've been Nick Dixon. Follow me on Twitter, that's very important for the economy, at Nick Dixon Comic and the climate. I'm on Getter, at Nick Dixon. I'm on uh, Headliners, 11 p.m. on GB News, Free Speech Nation on Sundays, Weekly Skeptic with Toby Young every week on a podcast. I do everything. But, um, and most importantly, uh, God bless and God save the king. Thank you very much. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen.